Hi, this is Mike Wardinsky with NatureMike.com. Welcome to Lightroom Secrets Revealed Part 2, the Develop Module. In this video, I'll show you some of the most overlooked post-processing features in Lightroom Classic. So let's dig in. I'd like to start off by talking about the Crop Tool. Now I can navigate to this icon in the Develop Module, or I can press the R key, and that will also bring up the Crop. Now from here, I can cycle through my crop overlays simply by pressing the O key. I like the rule of thirds, so we're going to keep it here. If I'd like to center this crop, I can hold Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, and that will bring the crop directly into the center of the frame. I can also click in the image and drag around like this. Now if I'd like to rotate this crop, I can press the X key and that will rotate my crop. Once I get the crop where I like it, I can go ahead and press enter, and there it is. If I'd like to reset my crop, simply go back to the tool and click reset. In the develop module, there are nine tabs that can be expanded as you work. As these tabs expand though, it can be kind of difficult to navigate between each one. So I like to work in what's called solo mode. If you navigate to one of the tabs where there's no text and then control click or right click on a PC and choose solo mode, that will only allow one tab to be open at a time, making your workflow much cleaner. And this technique can be done on any tab in Lightroom, whether it be the develop module or the library. There will be times where you want to match the exposure of one shot with the exposure of another. For example, I have this bright photograph here, and right next to it, the same exact composition, but darker. Now, if I'd like to lighten this darker image, all I have to do is click on the bright image that I want to match with, and then command click or control click with a PC on the dark image. Now, they're both selected, and you can see the bright rectangle around the bright one. That's how I know this is the exposure that's going to get matched. And so if we go up to settings, match total exposures, what that's going to do is going to brighten my dark frame. And so now when I navigate between the two of these, they look identical. I'm going to undo that. And if I wanted to make this bright image darker, all I have to do is click on the dark image, navigate back up to settings and match total exposures. And now the bright one has become darker. In this section, we're going to talk about a couple of different ways to reset sliders, as well as a few different local adjustment uh, tips and tricks. So the most basic way to reset all of the panels in the develop module is to simply come down to reset and that zeroes everything out. Um, but sometimes you don't want to reset all of an image. You might only want to reset part of it. For example, if I wanted to reset my tonal adjustments but not affect the presence or my white balance or any of these other tabs, I can hold the Option key or Alt on a PC, and you'll notice the word Reset appears in front of Tone as well as Presence. If I let go, there it disappears, and I'll hold it again. And so when I click on this, everything zeroes out. So we'll undo that. And sometimes you just want to reset one slider, and that's really easy to do. Rather than trying to drag this down and get down to zero, um, it's much easier just to double click on the text and that will zero out. So now I have a few local adjustments on this image. If I hover over the image, you'll see there's one down here and another one up here that I use the um, brush tool for. And that red that you're seeing over the sky, that is my mask overlay. That's the software telling me what areas have an effect. And if I click on this, my sliders will be exactly where I left them the last time I was working in this area. Now, the nice thing about using Photoshop is it uses layers and you can adjust the layers opacity to get the perfect effect every time. Now, Lightroom doesn't use layers, but there is a way to increase or decrease the amount of effect of any local adjustment. You simply hold Option or Alt on a PC and you'll notice you get this line with two arrows. And if I drag this to the left, 
that's going to decrease the amount of effect. And I can take it all the way down to zero, and you notice everything gets really blue and kind of a little bit darker. Now if I hold Option again and drag to the right, it's going to bring those sliders back to where they were, and I can even pass and make it even more intense, and it's going to get very yellow. Um, a lot of that yellow is coming from my, my temperature slider, and, and it's also getting a little bit lighter because I've, I've increased my blacks as well. While we're on the topic of local adjustments, I'd like to talk about overlays. So if I grab my grad filter here and drag over, and then I hover over this pin, I get a red overlay. But you'll notice the red overlay is kind of hard to see with that bright red background. So if I go over to Tools, Adjust Mask Overlay, I can choose between red, green, white, or black. So I'm going to change this to green, and then come back and hover over my pen, and you'll notice I get a green overlay. I can also hold Shift and hit the O key to cycle through the different options. Green works pretty well here, so I'll just leave it there. The Option key on a Mac, or the Alt key on a PC, is sort of the magic revealer key in Lightroom. Just by holding it, you can get a lot of other options to appear. And I'm gonna cycle through those really quick here. Starting with the brush tool, when I hold Option, it turns into a negative. If I have the eraser selected and hold Option, it turns into a positive brush. There are times when you'll want to adjust a graduate filter from both ends at the same time. By default, when you grab one end, the middle point moves. But if you hold Option or Alt on a PC, both ends of the grad will move in or outward at the same time, leaving the center point where it is. This can be nice if you have your center point aligned along a horizon like I do right here. In the split toning panel, when I hold Option, it will show me the color I hover over at full opacity. Holding the Option key while in the Basic panel and adjusting the whites will allow me to see my white point. So I hold Option and drag to my right. I can see this color start to form and that's showing me that that area is 100% white. There's no detail there anymore. And I can do the same with the blacks. As I drag down to the left, I'll start to see where the blacks start clipping. And a little bit of clipping is okay, so I'm gonna probably go somewhere like this. Sharpening is one of those situations where it can be kind of hard to see what's going on. So one, you should always be at 100% view, but also, if you're going to use the masking slider, it's a good idea to hold Option or Alt on a PC to see what's actually happening. At first, everything will go white, but as you drag the slider to the right, you'll start to see what's white is being sharpened and what's black is being left alone. This is a good way to, to look at a sky and see if your sky is being sharpened or not because typically you don't want sharpening in areas where there's no texture. Holding the Alt or Option key with the Spot Healing Brush selected will turn your cursor into a pair of scissors. Then you can click and drag over any spots you wish to remove. You can do some of them or all of them. The Tone Curve is a powerful tool in Lightroom, but a lot of people don't unlock its full potential. If you click this line in the lower right corner of the Tone Curve panel, it hides the sliders and then allows you to directly click and drag on the Tone Curve itself. This is a powerful way to add a fade effect in Lightroom. So if I click and drag, whoops, if I click and drag the lower right corner up, that's taking my blacks and making them gray. And then if I drag the top right corner and drag it down, that's taking my whites and making those gray. Now I need to add contrast back in the scene, so I'm going to create an S-curve. Simply by clicking on this line on the lower half, and then I'll click up here and drag up, creating an S. And so that's the, the fade tone in its most basic essence. If you'd like to get to the sliders again, simply click the icon in the lower right corner. Your tone curve is recorded, yet you can still control it using the sliders. 
A while back, Adobe added something called range mask to all of the local adjustments. What a range mask is, is it allows you to affect a particular part of the image based on a range of tones or colors. So I'm going to grab the graduated filter here. I'm going to bring it in from the bottom corner, drag it up a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and tint this water sort of a magenta and yellow just to kind of warm it up a little bit. Now, I don't want it to affect everything. Um, right now it's affecting all the tones from black all the way to 100% white. But if I navigate to the uh, range mask section here, I, it, right now it's turned off, I can click these arrows and come down to luminance. And if I click on luminance, now I can start to drag the left side where it says range. I, if I drag that to the right, it's gonna stop affecting those dark areas and only affect the highlights. So maybe I wanna go somewhere about here. And then underneath that is smoothness. So that's basically the feather of how much it feathers from the light down to the dark. Um, so if you want it to be less obvious, you drag this to the right. If you don't mind, if it's not, um, if it looks like it's blending well, you can kind of drag it to the left and that's okay too. The other option we have is color. So I'm gonna grab a grad filter and I'm gonna hold shift to bring the filter in straight. And I'm gonna drag this filter across the entire image because I want it to basically affect everything. And I'm gonna bring the whites up to add contrast. And now I'm going to go to my range mask and go to color. And I get this little color picker and I'm gonna pick over in these highlights in these trees because I only want this to kind of affect the highlights of the trees. And now when we drag the whites back and forth, you can see only my greens are being affected. The targeted adjustment tool allows you to make adjustments to a particular part of the image simply by clicking and dragging. You can find the targeted adjustment tools in the tone curve right here, as well as the hue, saturation, and luminance. You can also access them by clicking tools, targeted adjustments, and then choosing tone curve, hue, saturation, or luminance up here. If I wanted to intensify the golden glow here, make it more saturated, I can click on saturation and then click the target and then click in the golden area. And I'm just gonna click up and you'll notice that it becomes a little more intense. And maybe I wanna darken this blue a little bit. So I'm gonna go to luminance, grab my target and drag down to darken that up a little bit. Don't wanna to go too far, maybe somewhere about here. And for the tone curve, I can do the same thing. If I wanna lighten up these white areas, there are sort of these middle tone whites, I can click and start dragging and I'll start to bring that up too. And now I'm starting to get close to clipping here. So this is probably as far as I'm gonna go and I might actually come back here with a local adjustment brush or a grad filter and kind of start to darken this up just a pinch. This concludes the second portion of Lightroom Secrets Revealed. I hope you enjoyed the videos and learned some new editing techniques. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow my blog at naturemike.com where I'll be posting editing tips and tricks every month.